Tibetan Mystic Puppy Training. Tibetan Mystic Puppy is cute, fluffy. Okay, this is an AI video. Fuck that. Never mind. I take it back. That's a, that's a dumbass uh, way to... Learn about this breed. Channel points to give. This part will be about a dog breed, the Tibetan Mastiff, which is perhaps one of the greatest dog breeds of the past and is considered by many to be the common ancestor of all the large shepherd dog breeds that exist today. Tibetan Mastiffs are treated with respect by almost everyone. In my personal opinion, Tibetan Mastiffs are amongst the most incredible guardian breeds on the planet. One good look at these majorly imposing dogs makes it easy to understand why they are the most expensive dog breed in the world. With their long, shaggy manes, these guys really do uh -oh. look like lions. In this video, I'm going to discuss... Uh-oh, they're fucking expensive. Well, guess what? New cancel, uh, new cancellation unlocked. I just realized motherfuckers would be like, Yeah, I know you got this dog from someone else who couldn't take care of her because she's a massive fucking dog, and I know she's mixed. Well, I don't really care about any of that. This is the Gucci shirt of dogs, is what people will fucking say. What the fuck? Bro, what? There's already an email. How is that possible? Y'all work so fucking fast, it's crazy. Plus absolutely everything that you need to know about the king of the canine world, the Tibetan Mastiff. Welcome back to the Fenrir Canine Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you choose the perfect breed for you. So if you want to join this amazing community, start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future video. But now, let's get straight into our discussion of this fascinating protector from the roof of the world, the high plateaus of Tibet. And first, let's dive into the ancient history of the awesome Tibetan Mastiff. Tibetan's largest dog breed comes from the Himalayan region and used to be tasked with the protection of homesteads, families, as well as livestock. During the day, the Mastiffs were tethered at the entrance of their owner's property, which no doubt will have deterred any potential intruders. But at night, they were let loose to patrol their territory and to fend off predators, especially the snow leopard and the- Look at, look at, how, uh, look at how much of a guard dog she is, bro. She looks like a predator, you know? Tibetan wolf. Because the breed was developed in Tibet, untainted from outside influence for thousands of years, it remained relatively unchanged. And even today, there are two distinct types of Tibetan Mastiff. One more docile and more Mastiff looking that is large and heavier, and a smaller, lighter, and more agile working type. These smaller Mastiffs are more aggressive in their guarding behavior. Responsible breeders today make an effort to continue crossing these two lines in order to keep the heavier type imbued with a healthy level of aggression and to keep the smaller type from losing the physical prowess needed to fend off predators. Now, let's take a moment to really acknowledge the sheer physical presence of a fully mature Tibetan Mastiff. With their dense protective coats, these bear-like dogs strongly resemble modern long-haired livestock guardian breeds like the Great Pyrenees, the Caucasian Shepherd or the St. Bernard. In fact, if this resemblance is so striking that one would suspect these breeds to be genetically connected with the long-made Tibetan Mastiff, the founding father of them. This legendary breed is regarded by some as one of the world's most ancient breeds and as the ancestor of all the Mastiff breeds. And in fact, some scientists strongly suspect that the Tibetan was the ancestor for many of today's Mastiff and livestock guardian breeds. 
Now, fully mature Tibetan Mastiff males can reach heights of up to 76 centimeters, which is about 30 inches, and they can easily weigh 70 plus kilos, which is 160 pounds or so. These are large, sturdy dogs, well proportioned and athletic. Along with their loose skin around their necks, their long, dense, lion like manes protect the dogs in battle. Their glorious, dense coat can come in various colors. Whilst the original predominant color is said to be black, breed standards also allow for red, brown, red gold, grey, black and tan as well as chocolate and tan. These powerful, imposing dogs come with an immensely confident nature and a deep, booming bark that they are not shy to voice, especially during the night. Having served in various guardian roles for millennia, Tibetan Mastiffs can and will guard their family, their property and any farm animals there might be on that property. Perimeter guardians by nature, they will patrol the borders of their owner's farm, ranch or estate. Contrary to breeds like the Great Pyrenees or the Kuvas, they are not designed to live with the flock and bond closely with them. Instead, they are more oriented towards their owners and want to touch base with them on a regular basis. Being perimeter guardians as opposed to close quarter guardians like other mastiff breeds, they should not be left alone in the house, simply because their instinct will tell them to get outside by any means possible, should they detect a potential threat especially. And you do not want a 70 kilo mastiff. Bro, this fucking guy has gassed up this dog <clears throat> so much. It like feels like I'm, it feels like I adopted a fucking uh, dragon. You know what I mean? I love people saying "haha cop dog." No, not at all. Worse though, border patrol dog. This is this is the most. This is the most like fucking American dog in many ways. This dog has a tremendous amount of respect for private property. Okay, that's what this is. That's what I'm learning. Mastiff smashing through your French doors in a frenzy. These dogs take their guarding duties extremely seriously. At the same time, they are quite intelligent to know when they are on duty and when they are not. Therefore, if socialized from an early age, Tibetan Mastiffs can be calm and composed companion dogs on walks and other outings. As long as people and other dogs stay away from their property, Tibetan Mastiffs can get along nicely with them to an extent. Stable and even tempered, they do make reliable family dogs, and contrary to other large guardian livestock breeds, they bond with the entire family rather than just with a single person in the household. Hey guys, if you're not already, you should be following our Fenrir Rescue Diaries over on Fenrir, following and strays and helping programs to companions that perfect canine companions that can be rehomed to their forever homes so if you're interested in following my journey of how i do that there'll be a link to that channel down in the description box below That's i think you'll really enjoy teller. the journey but i'll let you get back to the video you were just watching so then albeit highly intelligent these dogs are not necessarily easy to train and neither are they keen to please their owners even though tibetan mastiffs are used to serve humans in various guarding roles they do so on their own making their own decisions about when to rest when to bark and when to attack an intruder in other words they are flawless sentinels who work for their owners but not with their owners all the more because, like many livestock guardian breeds, Tibetan Mastiffs are night active. Which makes sense, given that many predators will attack livestock- Bro, this shit is- <laughs> This is gonna kill me, dude. That's why she was fucking crying all night. It makes it so much harder to- Oh god, oh no. I mean, it's great that she sleeps all day, which is awesome for me when I'm streaming. But god damn stock during the night in the day they often rest but will quickly jump into action should the knees arise but there is a bright side to that equation tibetan mastiffs have always worked in small packs of their own kind at the very least in teams of two and as every pack has a leader whom the other members of the team or group will follow even this hard-headed breed can be motivated to follow the guidance of a calm consistent canine leader however such a leader absolutely needs to be experience with handling large powerful and independent dog breeds so tibetan mastiffs are truly incredible dogs 
dogs. Extremely dependable guardians. They will protect whatever or whomever their owner entrusts to them. As these massive dogs are immensely independent, they absolutely need an experienced leader. But paired up with an owner who is up for the task of raising and handling them, these bear-like giants make outstanding guardians and loyal companions. So I hope you enjoyed today's video on the tip. I mean, dude. Why you can't own a cane corso? What the fuck is this? Now I kind of want to find. And welcome back to the cane corso. Was another uh, dog that channel. I wanted Today to get. Today I want to discuss why you should not get a cane corso. And hold off before you click off of this video. Just because anything I cover today suggests you should not get a cane corso right now, doesn't mean you can't get a cane corso one, two, three years.